Hi. <laughs> Welcome to Two Non Doctors. I'm Liz Mealy. I'm Maria Shahada. No warning. Zero warning. Mid sentence. <laughs> you said, do you want to start? And then I started. <laughs> you know, you would have thought after a while we would have got the hang of this. Nah. <laughs> no. It's a no surprise way, every time. I like to keep us on our toes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, hi. Hey, how's it going? It's good. I'm I'm in LA. I don't know why I said it like that. It's it's really hot here. I mean, I said it kind of like that where it's just like it was hot back home, but I think my body's I went from like it's pretty hot in New York to like it's fairly hot in Florida to it was like stupidly cold in San Francisco. And you're like, San Francisco, what do you do? Why are you so expensive and cold? Like, like what do you have to offer? Around. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 And yeah, what like, I like, here? yeah, I like you, but like the hills, like my legs were sore the whole time. And then and then you came here and it's, it was a hundred, it was a hundred and two yesterday, but it felt like a hundred and ten. And you're like, it was a hundred and ten. <laughs> we are in <laughs> Egypt in LA. Um, almost killed both my mom and my sister. Like my mom's like, I feel nauseous and I have a headache. And I was like, well, that's uh that's, um, that's a heat stroke and we're going to go inside. And, and my, I, my mom's like, should I take something for it? I was like, I'm pretty sure if you drink water and eat something, you'll feel better. And that's exactly what happened. But like, we were just walking around a flea market and I almost killed my mom. So yeah. Yeah. That's what happened to me. Remember I like, I was like all nauseous. I had a headache and I couldn't, I was like, but I have a seat by the pool. <laughs> I don't want to go. <laughs> guys, guys, I'm vacationing. Yeah. Cause it'd be one thing. Like if like, I made my mom walk a lot in San Francisco also almost killed her that way. Um, but that was like, she was tired. This was like, my mom's like, I don't feel good, but we were like outside for like an hour. So I think there was a part of me that's just like, I mean, she didn't say anything until she didn't feel well. Like she didn't, it wasn't like, I was like, toughen up lady. Like there's yeah. no, there's no harassing of old people. It was just like, Ooh, but I think it's, it's hot out there guys. Don't, <laughs> don't kill your parents. <laughs> like, but, on top of the fact that like we're staying in an Airbnb that's like a, like on an aggressive hill. Luckily, luckily it's at the bottom of the hill because when we first found out where our Airbnb was, I was like, oh my God. Oh yeah. my God. Like this is insane. Um, and it's at the bottom of the hill. But like Emily driving down was like, I don't like driving down this hill. So I drove down it and I was like, I don't like driving down this. Hill. I was like, because it's like on from- a cliff edge. It's like, Gah! like Ugh. it is. And then there's always um, someone like on a bike, like on the the hind wheel, just like up, like doing a. Yeah, yeah, what do you call those? Like, Papa wheelies? Uh, I don't remember. Wheelies, just doing a dance. <laughs> I, I mean, it's insane. But um, I think she only had to go. But she went. You know, I've had a lot of work while I've been out here, so it's just been my mom, and my brother going on adventures, and I guess my brother took her somewhere that was a hill, and she has bad knees. Like my mom's pretty fit, but she just doesn't have the greatest knees, and she was like, she's like, I almost died four times in this trip. And every time like she gets scared in the car or whatever, I go, mom, you will not die on my watch. I can make that promise to you. You will die on someone else's watch, but it's not going to be on mine. So stop acting like I'm taking you bungee jumping every time we get in the car. Like I cannot, <laughs> like it makes me <laughs> crazy. Like we'll be walking, like we'll walk across the street and she'll be like, there's cars. I was like, yeah, mom, the walkie signs there. What do you think I do every day? Like, yeah. what is, what, <laughs> like, why do you think I'm trying to kill you? She's like, I just said no. And I go, mom. Did your, when you started driving, did your parents get in the passenger seat and then do the fake break? Like just by, in, by like, uh, not instinct, um, reflex. They don't do the fake break. My mom, my mom still does this to this day. The oh shit bar, you know, that yeah, yeah. kind of bar that's right there. Yeah. Like my mom will be like, ah! and like sometimes and you're just like, but like sometimes it's just like, it's just like, go, like it's just the, the light turned green. And my mom's all screaming. I was like, she was like, a car came really fast. I was like, yeah, mom, that's, we're on a, we're on a highway. Like, yeah. What are we yeah. doing here? But, yeah. but, she, but my she mom in the car likes, with me yeah. when I first started driving was like, we got onto the highway. It was my first time on a highway and I didn't know what to expect. And I didn't know you had to go from zero to 60 like now. <laughs> yeah, 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 and so yeah. there was a big semi coming and I was like, ah, like, and I just, um, just slammed on the gas. My mom was just chill. <laughs> like, yep. And yeah, yeah. on the highway. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, and that's how you drive now. And it was <laughs> yeah. funny because I've, 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 I've done some driving, like clearly I, I dropped M off. Like me and M drove co- cross country when she moved here almost seven years ago. And, um, she wasn't a great driver. She wasn't a confident driver, but definitely wasn't, um, a highway driver, definitely not an LA driver. And now I feel like she's like an LA driver, but like very LA driver to the point where I'm just like, are you 
trying to kill people. Like it's in the beginning, it's like a survival thing where you're yeah. like, you need to be good driver so you can survive LA driving. And then you're like, I think you might part, part of the problem. <laughs> like, yes. just like It goes from defense to offense. And then you're like, oh, so you're the quickly. Dog. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Quickly. I remember when my ex fiance came to visit me, we were in like Pasadena. I was driving to the ice house and I was getting off. Like it was like by the park somewhere. Uh, and I was getting off. I think I was getting off onto a highway and then somebody like from the by road, like flew by me and clipped my side view mirror. So that yeah. meant now I had like two mirrors that were like just hanging. <laughs> and he was like, what <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> and I was like, welcome just, to LA, baby. <laughs> I just was so unfazed by it. Cause I'm, I was like, yeah, other people happen. Like it just, um, yeah. the scariest thing about, and we can move on from LA driving, but the scariest thing is that like, if you're on the 101 and there's like four lanes and two of the lanes are getting off into other highways, sometimes those highway lanes will be like backed up, but you can't tell because somebody will be flying at 65, 70, and then they'll move out of the way real quick. And then suddenly you're flying into the back of like a stopped lane and then yeah. you have to move out of the way real quick. And then everybody's Bing. about to kill themselves. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. It's fun to drive in LA. No, no, it's, it's, um, it's an adrenaline rush <laughs> and I think it really keeps you youthful. I don't think even people are getting plastic surgery here. I think that just, the wind is pressing back. <laughs> their skin <laughs> just flying down a highway that they shouldn't yeah but it's it's been it's been a good trip it's just been it was supposed to be like a working vacation and it was mostly work and I yeah. felt pretty bad about it and I felt bad because in Florida I had a bunch of work and I was with my friend San Francisco was always like I had shows and stuff so they knew that but LA was like I was gonna do maybe one show and then I ended up doing two shows recording a voiceover thing having like 80 things to promote my special. And I just was like, luckily, I mean, I'm glad, I'm glad my brother was here because he kind of took the lead on stuff. Although he almost killed my mom several times. <laughs> and then, and then my sister took off Wednesday. We all went to San Diego together, which was really fun. Um, and, um, and then, like I said, this weekend, I have one more day of just, we're taking it easier. It's, it, it's also, I don't know, I can't remember the last time I had a vacation with my family. And this is like a weird vacation because it like accidentally happened. It was just kind of like an idea. And then like, like I was going and then Emma's was taking some days off and then we invited my mom and then Sam's like, I'll come. And then like, it just kind of, so it's the middle kids vacation. Like my older sister, my little sister, I mean, my little sister, my older sister, my little brother aren't there. My dad's not here. And it's just one of those things where we're just like, oh, we accidentally did a half family vacation. And then you're like, my mom was like, do you think people are angry? I was like, well, Teresa just started a new job and has 17 kids. Greg's in law school and dad definitely would have just not wanted to come. So I was like, I think, I think we're fine. We'll find out in 10 years if they're mad. Like yeah. that's, <laughs> that's how family works. Right. Yeah. But it's, it was also like, I, this, it turned into a family vacation and I have not been on. And then of course I turned into dad cause I'm always working. And that's what my dad would do. Like we'd go on a vacation. He'd be like, I have work to do. You guys entertain yourself. And we're like, cool vacation. And then that's pretty much what I did all trip. So I am my father. Yeah. Well, good. Um, we've <laughs> always good. known that. We've always <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it's been it's been good. We should probably let the people know that we're we're busy. <laughs> what you've what you've always feared. Because I feel like a lot of people in the beginning of this were like, Hey, are you guys gonna keep doing this podcast after the world opens up? And we're like, Yeah, of course. Of course always. together forever. <laughs> And then, and then it's getting harder. So we yeah. are, we are, we are going on an indefinite break as we um, make that money. I think that's the term. Yeah. Dollar dollar bills. Yo. Yeah. And then you do this move, <laughs> but then we pick it but back up. It's, like, it, it's not, <laughs> it's like pound pound bills. Jingle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 it's yeah, not yeah, as fun. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's got a, it's got a cling. It's got a little cling to it. Pound pound. Um, yeah, I think, I mean, even just to record this episode, we had to cancel like four times mm -hmm. to try yeah. to figure it, you know what I mean? And it doesn't help that I'm on the, on the West Coast right now, which makes our time difference even more exaggerated. Um, yeah. Luckily, I never got on West Coast time. So I've been waking up at like seven every day. Um, oh, that's awesome. My body's like, right? <laughs> that's what I do when I go to the East Coast. I just like go to bed at 7 p.m. and wake up at <laughs> four or five o'clock. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, when, when farmers are ready uh, yeah. to hang out, it's a good so, writing retreat. Yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. You know, no, 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 you're hundred percent right. I think I honestly have felt kind of lucky because my family was still sleeping and I was getting stuff done and I felt 
you do feel like a badass getting up early and getting work done. Mm. Um, and it's, and sometimes when I have jet lag coming back from Europe, I'm like, why can't I continue to wake up at 7 a.m.? Like, why does not, like, why do I ever have to get back on my normal time? And then I have a 1 a.m. spot and I go, that's why. That's why. Yeah. It's always comedy. Yeah. Comedy always brings me back to um, my slacker teenage schedule. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. We are forever teens just by being comedians. A hundred percent. So we are pausing indefinitely starting after this episode. Um, we'll keep you in the loop via social media. Um, mm -hmm. We're just out here doing the thing we were doing in 2019. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, we'd be busy. That's, I guess that's the best way to say that. Yeah. You know, we never know. You never know what pandemics will happen in the future. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. There's so many pandemics on the rise. Um, or maybe all of our old episodes will gain in like popularity and then there'll be like people protesting, like bring them Whoa, back. <laughs> what? Tell us what you Googled. All the doctors <laughs> died and tell us what you Googled. And I'll be like, thank you so much. I did. What did I do? I like diagnosed. Oh, this was based on this. This is how I know we're learning stuff. Um, remember you said you weren't like, you, you know, you were looking up the benefits of, or no, you were basically almost like what we talked about with the heat stroke. And I was like, you need electrolytes. And you're like, I looked it up. I do need electrolytes. My brother's had like a headache for like three days in a row. And my brother's been running outside. It's been hot as shit where they live. And so I was like, I think he's like, I've been drinking water, but I don't feel better. And I was like, I think you need electrolytes. So I gave him a bunch of packets and he's been having electrolytes every morning. And I cured his headache. First of all, the doctor was like, I don't know what's wrong with you. And I was like, come on, everybody. Oh, Come wow. On. Wow. Like he, thought, he thought he had to go. He thought he had to go down on his medication. And I was like, I think you just need electrolytes. Yeah. Come on, guys. And That's he felt crazy. better. And I'm like, yeah. And that was because of my Google. Did you tell him it was because of my Google? I did. I was just like, you should really be listening to our podcast. We're geniuses. We help. <laughs> also, we're don't here. take our medical advice ever. Oh, no, we're morons. Please don't listen to us. <laughs> um, I did save. I did save my brother. Um, announcements. I feel like us taking a break was an announcement, but um, uh, I guess this is like a, a thank you to our Patreons. Thank you to everybody that supported us. Um, if you want to continue to support us, you can. All that money goes to uh, paying our rent, going out down the road, paying for the stickers we already bought. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. And all the all the Google storage we had to buy. And like, I mean, there was yeah, costs yeah. towards the podcast that it does go to. So, yeah. So um, if you want to continue to be a Patreon, we absolutely appreciate it. Like I said, we are in an indefinite pause, so we don't know when uh, bonuses and other stuff will come out. Um, but regardless, thank you for everybody that has supported us, especially during uh, all of 2020 and even 2021 when things were weird. Um, so this is mostly a thank you. Yeah. You guys are awesome. That really and we genuinely appreciate yeah. you. It really yeah. did. Like we appreciate you a lot. What I mean, yeah. Okay, follow us. This is a good time to follow us because we might announce some when we're live, or we might announce when we're coming back for for a special episode, or we're just coming back because we miss each other's faces every week or whatever. Um, you can follow us on the socials on uh, Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube at Two Non Doctors. It's the number two for doctors, and on Instagram at Two Non DRS. Um, follow me for all of my um, happenings uh, at Maria Shahada on. Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok is Maria Shahada comedy. I don't know who Maria Shahada is. Fuck that girl. Fuck that girl Crazy. dancing in her Crazy room. Crazy they even exist. Yeah. Also follow her YouTube and watch her clips and stuff. All Maria Shahada. Yeah, I'm in the Buy process of like actually like finding a bunch of clips to post weekly. Do that. Some... Buy I... her album. She still I has an yeah. album out. I have that. I keep forgetting about that album. <laughs> oh yeah, I did that. Yeah. Um, my special, by the time this comes out, my special is out. I hope you have watched it. It's free on YouTube. It's called the ghost of academic future. It already has millions of views. I'm just making this up. I don't know. Um, <laughs> well, immediately, <laughs> immediately just gets a million views. Um, uh, but yeah, check out my free special. You can buy it as an album or you can watch it for free on YouTube. Um, what else did I want to say? Uh, share it with the world. I would say that like you can give me money and blah, blah, blah. You can buy as an album, but I would say the best thing that you can do to help me is share it with your friends and family. Um, and then I am touring. 
Um, by the time this comes out, I will be going to Greenwood, Colorado, Keystone, Colorado, San Antonio. I'll be back to, I haven't done that since I think 2018, maybe 19 Phoenix for the first time. I'm going to be in long Island. Um, uh, Des Moines, Iowa. I've never been to, I'm going to Hasbrook Heights, New Jersey, Salt Lake city, Tampa, Florida. So all that stuff is at lizmealy.com. You can also follow me everywhere at Liz Mealy and uh fan mail yes okay <laughs> this is from is this from youtube yes so it's about phone calls to ourself like we said whether or not we would um do a 20 second phone call to our past self or our present self or future self and what we would say and they and this person writes 20 second phone call to myself. Don't worry so much about upcoming things, issues, events. It is too easy to be wrong about how you think everything will unfold. Let it happen, then react. My anxiety would have been so much easier to deal with had I done that. And that was from Stop It. Thanks, Stop It. Thank you. It It is interesting because like, I think, I think one of our earlier episodes, we kind of talked about just this, like, especially in the, was it the power of now? We did that um, episode very early yeah. on where we talked about like, cause that's what the book that like brought us together as friends. And it's, um, I still have, um, this thing I wrote because one of the biggest things that I got from that book was, um, um, accept then react. And it's funny when you read that, you're like, get yeah, the, but then when you realize <laughs> how often you don't, you don't do either of those things, you just react, react. And there's never any of a processing. And like, even just for me, like accepting there's so much out of my control as somebody that still struggles a bit with control issues, I would say I'm like 70% better, but I can even tell when I get stressed that I go right back into like control mode. But this idea that like, there is so much that is truly out of our control. Like I, I have become that like yell at the news person. I think the pandemic did that to me. I was never somebody that, no, that uh, no, hey, you've always been. No, a I get, I yell at, I yell, at, I yell. <laughs> the yelling isn't new. The news and the TV, <laughs> like that tip, like I am like literally chopping up vegetables because I have like an open kitchen living room situation. I'm like chopping up vegetables, kind of half watching the news, just like some old timey stuff I never thought I would do and like yelling at it. I feel like and you shouldn't like, watch the news and have a knife in your hand. Just, I shouldn't do you know, anything. The TV with screen it. just has like a knife sticking. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> you know what you were doing? Um, no, I, you're, that's a very valid point and I'll keep that into consideration. <laughs> um, but I, I think in general, like I'll find myself sometimes watching the news or like hearing stuff and being just like rageful and then being like in this moment, is there anything I can do in a larger scheme? Is there anything I can do? Like, and it's almost calming because like some stuff is like genuine. I cannot do anything about a, a hurricane coming right now. Like there's nothing I can do about that, but I could maybe help with hurricane relief. I could send money. I could see where I could give bottles of water, whatever. Like there's stuff you can do to be a good person in a shit place, or there's things you can do to prepare for shit situations, but some situations you just can't. And I think I spent most of my life like just trying to control all these things and feeling angry that 99% of it I couldn't or feeling like a failure when those things didn't work out because, you know, the same way I think I can, can keep it plain in the air by just being awake and hoping and stressing. But I mean, I totally That agree. doesn't work. I think it's, <laughs> studies are still out. It really feels like if I clench my thighs really tight, <laughs> I will keep myself from falling. No, I think you're doing something. You're definitely keeping it steady. I know. That, and like that whole plane owes me a thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Why are they <laughs> clapping for the pilot? My diligence. Yeah. 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 But like how many times have you been told that? Have you read that? I don't know what it actually took for me to absorb that information because even reading it in um, The Power of Now, it wasn't until therapy. It wasn't until actually truly understanding how much I tried to control and how much I stress over. I think there's like, I forget whose quote it is. I wonder if it's, if I'm gonna, I, I can't even tell you who the person is. Maybe somebody in the audience can. Um, uh, when you worry, you, you put yourself through pain twice. Mm. You know what I mean? So it's like worrying something's going to happen. And then when it actually happened, like, so you're like, why are you causing pain twice when you can just deal with it when it happens or the many suppose, scenarios? Like, wouldn't like preparing yourself for that situation happening be the point 
of worrying rather than just being blindsided by something really bad when it feels like twice the pain. So yeah, well, there's, there's definitely things you can prep for. I'm not telling you not to prep for a hurricane. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Prep for a hurricane. But at the same point, like there's only so much that you can do. You can't get a new house. I love you know that I mean? our dynamic is very much the power of now. Cause you know how the power of now is like a bunch of questions people Yay! have for him and he answers them every month. So <laughs> I'm the skeptical person with questions yeah. and you're Eckhart like, Tolle. All right. You want this book to be longer. I get these questions. Um, <laughs> I get it. Um, yeah, but like, I'm trying to give like a, like a good example. Like, you know, when you're worried, somebody's mad at you. Yeah. Like you let you genuinely like are like, ah, I, th- I think Murray is mad at me. Constant, you yeah. know, yeah, of course. You can face it head on. Hey, are you mad at me? Or hey, is there anything that's going on? Or you can let it go. But there's not really much prep you can do to if someone's mad at you. What are you gonna make a bunch of cookies just in case? Like it's just a little silly to preemptively be worried that you're mad at me as opposed to either just doing something about it. Or I feel like I should get mad at you just so you send me cookies. <laughs> That's your great idea. As soon as I said it, you're like, "That's a really great solution," and it Actually. really would change our dynamic. <laughs> I don't know. I I have noticed, dude. If we had the pandemic when I was in my 20s, I would. I don't know if I would have survived. I would have just been an absolute mess. Instead, I was like 20 percent a mess. Like I cried a bunch, ate too much ice cream, I got sad sometimes. Mm. But I kind of was like everybody's going through this. I That's don't what I like about it. It was like, I mean, aside from like all the horrific shit, but like just yeah. that we were all in this together. Um, yeah. But I was able to have a perspective that I know I was not able to have in my twenties. And I'm, I genuinely had empathy for a lot of people in their teens and twenties that both didn't have the maturity in the sense of like their life maturity. You know what I mean? Either they're living with their parents or they don't have their own financial ability or they're not that far in their career. And then just the literal life maturity of like, yeah, this sucks and nobody else has gone through this, you know, unless they were a hundred, but things will work out in some capacity and something will find out uh, altogether what's going to happen. So I don't know. I, I just know for a fact, I would not have pivoted the way I did or handled it the way I did, or even survived the way I did if I was younger. Yeah. But, um, thank you for writing in. Stop it. Or writing on yeah. YouTube. Yeah. 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 Um, Appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, googly ghouls. Yes. Yeah. Googly. Yeah. Googles. Um, okay. I'll go first. Um, so monkeypox. I know, I don't know if we brought it up. I don't know if we talked about it, but I've just been, I'm not like scared but I found it very fascinating that they basically said there's two monkeypox vaccines and one of them people with eczema can't have, like specifically eczema, they can't have this vaccine. And I was like, what? Like it just, out of all the health concerns, why eczema? And why is psoriasis not in it? It was just, I was like, so I basically was like, why are people with eczema not allowed to get the monkeypox vaccine? And what's so, okay. So the first thing it said was, um, the CDC warns that people with certain skin conditions with a heavy emphasis on eczema face higher risks of severe monkeypox disease and uh, should they become infected. But why? Eczema affects the integrity of the skin barrier in the skin immune system, making the skin more vulnerable to developing infection, including monkeypox infection. Then it says, essentially, people with eczema have a weaker skin barrier blah, 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 person, dry, cracked skin makes it easier for the viruses and bacteria to cross into skin, monkeypox included. Um, Okay. Um, So then it says monkeypox typically is a self-limiting disease lasting between two to four weeks, but in severe cases, especially with those in those who are very young, pregnant, immune compromised, or have a history of eczema, the infection can lead to hospitalization, even death. First of all, they never say like psoriasis or like, I just like, as somebody that has eczema and has had it, still has it, I'm just kind of like, it is one of the least, it's, I think there's a higher percentage of people that have eczema than the other immune compromised um, illnesses, disease or whatever. But like psoriasis seems way more severe and that wasn't brought up. I just find that so weird. And they've always put us like in similar camps but different camps, like, you know, our lotions, it's psoriasis and eczema, but like psoriasis is over here and eczema is over here. And then I think I told you during the pandemic, 
that they just in 20, like April of 2020 have discovered that eczema is an autoimmune disease, which I was like, yeah, duh. Like <laughs> I could have told you that. Like, why didn't you just ask us? Like, so I don't know, but I found that super weird. So they do technically have another vaccine that if you do have eczema, you can have, but then I also don't. And then, sorry, I'm like rambling at this point, but then also if you do get monkeypox, they say like getting the vaccine can actually lessen the severity of it and speed up the healing process. Unlike something like um, the COVID vaccine does not do that. It just kind of helps you in the future. So then that the other thing is, is that clearly something about that vaccine when you get it and you have eczema, it makes it worse, which I slightly understand better from that answer. But I just don't understand specifically why it's eczema, even with that answer about us having a thinner skin barrier. Does people with psoriasis not have a thinner skin barrier? You know, am I, I ba do I have baby I skin? Saying, did you, okay, I have a couple questions. One, did you follow up with, can people with psoriasis have that vaccine? I didn't. I just okay. know that there, I just know that there is an, there's two vaccines for monkeypox and there is specifically one that people with eczema can't get, which is crazy because, you know, um, only certain people can get the monkeypox vaccine right now and there's a shortage of it. So I can't imagine waiting in line for hours like people have and then finding out they only have the eczema one and you're somebody that has eczema. My second question is, is um, are you all worried about monkeypox? Um, I'm not. I did a bunch of it is an epidemic in New York. Um, I've done it a bunch is? of, yeah, we are the like epicenter of monkeypox in, in the U S right now. Cause it's New York. Wow. Like, what? like, cause I mean, there was monkeypox here, but I, I don't remember it. Like, um, I don't remember it spreading all that much. Like there wasn't any panic about it. And I don't think anyone got any vaccines, but like maybe some people did, but like, it wasn't talked yeah. about like, like, um, it's, yeah, it's I, I just think like the way they said it was the spread was very much um, it was very difficult. It was like contagious, but it was also not like you just breathe on someone and get it like you have to like. Yeah, Cl close, intimate contact. So that's why right. it's not a sexually transmitted disease, but clearly sex, you are in close, intimate contact. Right. So and it's also it's not a gay disease, but it's been more that's spreading. what they were dancing around in the in like the thing too so it's like but i just so right now i couldn't get the vaccine if i even wanted it it is specifically for people that are in the lgbtq plus community um and um it's i don't i think even more there's like high risk stipulations of why you would be allowed to get it but there are like limited amounts of the vaccine, which is crazy because this is similar to smallpox vaccine. And we were slightly prepared for this. I, I watched like a whole thing about how like, this is really sad that we're even in this situation because we had an absorbent amount of the vaccine and had it ready. And A, we let it expire, which is stupid. We sh There's other countries that have had to deal with this. And we just, instead of giving it to them, we just let it expire, which is garbage. But then even more so, um, as it was getting ready to expire, we should have gotten more and mm. been ready for this because what are we doing? Right. Um, I was just trying to read about psoriasis, but it's not an easy thing to just look Even up. the eczema thing, it took me a bunch of research to even find. This was like actually the most concrete. It was actually said so well. This is in self. Oh my God, it's in like a fitness thing. Uh, yeah, this was actually the, one of the best written, most easily digestible um, breakdowns of it. And I was actually quite grateful because I watched so many that I was like, what the fuck are they talking about? So yeah, I was just curious. But I mean, even them saying we have a thinner skin barrier, which I guess kind of makes sense. But, and then does it matter? In some sense, it matters that if I'm like touching my elbows, because it's usually where I get eczema. Um, let's say you don't have eczema at the moment, like you're fine and there's no whatever, are you still more susceptible or does it mean that you have it? Or I, it just opened up a Pandora's box of more questions, but yeah. I'm not worried. Like I'm not personally worried. Like as I've learned more information as a New Yorker, I am not worried, but I am keeping up on it if necessary to worry. That makes sense. Okay. Be because I don't, because I worry. I what I said before. Should we? Yeah. Let's just. Should we just edit everything? Yeah, we're going to edit everything we just said before. I, I worry. 
What did you Google, Maria? Well, I'll tell you when we come back. Okay, I Googled um, what, why do we stretch when we're tired? Oh. It's kind of hard to Google because like, like up in the morning. Yeah, okay. like that's the one I meant like at night. Like I always stretch at night when I'm tired. I'm like, oh. But yeah, when you wake up in the morning and uh, whatever. So um, I found an article and it's like, why does stretching and yawning after waking up feel so pleasant? And what are the benefits? And this is from the new scientist. Because we're kitties. <laughs> um, the stretching you do after waking up isn't really stretching. It's a process involving the nervous system called pendiculation. Yawning is also pendiculation. Uh, it happens in three stages, contraction, release, and then lengthening of the muscles to their natural resting length. It is a release of tension, the sensation of the muscles softening that feels so good. Um, pendiculation on waking up resets the tension and resting length of the skeletal muscle by activating the spindles, which are sensory receptors located within the skeletal muscles. Its purpose is to prime the muscles for movement. Cats sleep a lot and can often be seen pendiculating afterwards by extending their backs and pushing their front legs forward. This prepares their muscles for action to run away from a dog or pounce or on, on prey. Um, for humans, it helps us wake up and walk to the kitchen to put the kettle on. Ha ha. Um, but yeah, so it's pendiculation. Does that answer it though? Um, um, it does though. So I think, I mean, it doesn't for yours for going to bed. It definitely made me that stretching when you get up and then um, the kitty stretching, which is it's cutest because the little, 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 Pause. Look like that. All right, we we know you're in love with cats. <laughs> I haven't um, seen my kitty in three weeks. I know. When you sleep, your muscles lose uh, tone and fluid tends to pool around your back. Stretching helps the massage to massage fluid gently back into the normal position. So maybe it's also like this is an assumption, and I apologize, but you're like sitting on the couch, you're watching a movie, you start to feel tired, and it's like you haven't moved in a while. And, yeah and things have pulled yeah which is crazy it's like your your muscles lose fluid like i don't know like what like um it just feels like a sometimes like when a you catch- take vegetables out of the fridge and, and like all the water has come out of the vegetables and you can you have to drain it because they were just like watery gross i was thinking about ketchup you know how oh, like yeah. you have to shake it yeah 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 so why don't we shake though like, we just shake the fluid back pee. in place because we're not really ketchup <laughs> well, it's not analogy. Like ketchup. <laughs> we're like ketchup but we're not really like ketchup. Are you, shake, shake shake don't they tell you to shake it out <laughs> sorry anybody had to listen to me shake <laughs> oh god um yeah all right well i'm gonna start telling my cat it's like ketchup your next cat should be named ketchup dude i saw a cat named lunchbox and now i feel like i misnamed my cat yeah Fucking lunchbox is a great name that's an awesome name um so I got my cat chipped while he was away. So he got neutered and he got chipped. So then I had to sign up for his little chip thing in case he gets lost. And you have to make a profile because that's the picture they're going to send if he gets lost. And I had just posted a picture of him in front of a window looking back while there was a bird outside. And I was like, oh, this would be his dating profile. So now it's his lost profile if he ever gets lost. God forbid. Um, anyway. I now get alerts every day because you're a part of a system that's like Oreo is lost. Like any cat that's in your neighborhood, it'll send, it's like basically, cause that's like half of what the chip is. So now I see cat names every day and I'll be like, Oreo, you should stay lost. That's a terrible name. But then (laughs) I saw a cat named Lunchbox. I was like, we got to find Lunchbox. It's such a great name. Oreo isn't lost. Oreo ran away. (laughs) Oreo is like, come on, dude. I'm black and white. Oreo. Oreo was a great name in 1980. It is not a great name in 2022. Get your life together. That's Arch. what I wrote back to that woman. <laughs> the woman's like, oh, you found, you found an Oreo? And I was like, no, I have a book called Why Cats Are Assholes. I have a whole chapter on naming. I really think if Oreo doesn't come back, you should get another cat, name it better. If Oreo does come back, maybe you should have a talk about why he ran away, which is because you named him Oreo. And um, she runs away crying. Your work yeah, is yeah. done. It's, I did. I, I, you know, sometimes you got, it's like those people that are just like, well, I'm honest. I'm just an honest person. Like uh, I'm just out here being honest. <laughs> It's funny, like on stage, that honesty is funny. One to one, it's just brutal. <laughs> it is awful. I don't know why I'm alone. <laughs> <laughs> um, off topic. Oh, yeah. yeah, I learned a lot from that. Or catch up. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do yeah. the. Okay. Uh... Let's get personal. Yeah. Ah, okay. Who do you wish you could get back in contact with? Uh. 
I don't know. Who who do you wish you could get back in contact with? I have a bunch of names and they're all for like different weird reasons. Like, like, okay. So one is my friend Brie. She was like one of my close friends in high school. I was kind of in within a group of three people and I'm friends with two out of three of those people still. But then I just had my friend Brie who I just knew when we were friends and we hung out a bunch and I hung out with her a ton. She actually reminds me of Adrian when I really think about it. Like I had a starter, Adrian Appalucci. Real quick. Yeah. yeah. People in your life that you know now are just replicas of people from different parts of your life. Have you noticed this? Like it, I, have no, but friend- I have mom friends. I have dad friends. I have like, like you do kind of, there's certain people that you just kind of keep making that same friend. And you go, Oh, this is my London, this person or the, yes, yes. it's weird. No, it is. It's super creepy. So I knew, I knew in like high school that I made, I made dad friends and I made mom friends. And by that I meant like, like, and I also, I would get really mad at the dad friends, the way I would get mad at my dad, like you genuinely did. be like, like, and, and I don't really have any more dad friends because they are like, like, yeah, they're like telling me to clean my room, but like just genuinely, like they just would trigger that as opposed to like, my mom's a pretty chill person. So my mom gets depressed. My mom's like, you know, she has, you know, whatever, but that's, they're who my mom is the core of her is wonderful and so I have a bunch of friends that are like that is Adrian one that of your be- mom friends absolutely yeah and my mom loves her loves her yeah. <laughs> um sense. but but looking back Brie is Brie is my Adrian is a Brie like it's it's kind it is yeah. kind of crazy and I think I tried to get in touch with her like Facebook time like we didn't really keep in touch when we all went to college. And I think she had a kid really young. Like, I think she was like 19, 20, 21. Like she had a kid super young. And I think I reached out to her once or twice to be like, Oh, how's it going? Da, da, da. And she just kind of wasn't interested. And I I'm sure I didn't accept that. Well, knowing 21 year old me. Um, but over time you just kind of accept that these people don't care but it does kind of bum me out so I technically I could get in contact with her I you know I think we have some connection but she was such a part of my high school life and such an important friend to me and I don't know why we lost contact that nothing happened um but that's like one of the first people I think of is my friend Bray it's funny because like I mean I am in contact with a lot of people from like my past just because of social media so it's like There isn't really anyone that's just like, where did they go? And if they are gone, like I haven't been able to figure out, like maybe they have a new name because they got married. Mm -hmm. Like I didn't I don't want to get in contact with them for any reason. I wouldn't want to start a friendship again. It just I would like I looked someone up um, who I was friends with when I was like eight. But like I just wanted to see what they were up to. But I don't necessarily want to get like coffee and reconnect. You know what I mean? Yeah, I would say Brie, I would want to reconnect with. I do have a couple, almost all the other ones are like, just want to see what they look like. Like I had a crazy yeah. crush on this kid named Tim when I was 13 or 14. I can't remember. I think I was 14, like crazy crush on him and was like heavily like, and he was like, no, um, <laughs> very aggressively like, no. And then he moved away let's say I had the crush was 14. I think he moved away when I was like 15 or 16 and I don't remember his last name and I don't remember anything other than his name was Tim and that he drew little sketches. And that's half the reason I had a crush on him is he could draw. It's hilarious. You know, nothing about him. You're like, I was so in love with him. And he's like, I was deeply, I deeply in love with him. I know, I know almost nothing about him. Um, but that's who I mean, 14 year old me. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty typical. You just sort of like develop feelings for people because they sit next to you and you're like, hi. <laughs> yeah. Um, he sat next to me a whole year in like three classes. And I was like, I think this is love. Yeah. I'm almost positive. <laughs> this is love. <laughs> we'll look it up, but I'm pretty sure this is love. Yeah. Well, I, I smell a Springer episode. First, let's bring back Jerry Springer. Second. <laughs> <laughs> Liz, your 14 year old crush that wanted nothing to do with you. He is not doing great in his life. Well, thank you for helping me out there, Tim. I really appreciate that um, I didn't peak at 14 by getting what I wanted. Um, and I really think it made me strive and become a better person. I learned how to do eyeliner. Um, I shower more. Um, I'm friendlier. I'm funnier. Yeah, and look I really at me give now, a lot motherfucker. To- yeah, yeah. I'm like, I give so much to Tim. Uh, that first level of rejection really helps me blossom. Um, 
Yeah. And then like everybody else is a couple, like there was a, an, okay. In uh, elementary school, I think it was the fifth grade or the sixth grade. I can't remember. I think it was the sixth grade. There was Lizzie. Then there was a Liz, there was another Liz M and then I was Liz M and I couldn't be Liz M. I had to either be Elizabeth, which I was like, no, absolutely not. Or um, I wrote just my full name, Liz Mealy, which star power, look at that full name. Yeah. Um, but my teacher, he was like six, five. He was like a giant man. Super nice, super funny. My friend Danny um, was in that class as well. And he knew we were best friends. And he was just like, he was just a nice man to us. But um, he would erase the L in my name so that it said is because I was also the shortest Liz. And it would make me infuri- it would infuriate me. <laughs> just infuriate me. I was just like, Mr. McKenzie, my name is Liz. <laughs> um, just like crazy. Just a crazy sixth grader. Um, but then I heard somebody call somebody Izzy the other day. And I was like, man, I should have just leaned in. Like Izzy is kind of adorable. Izzy's a great um, name. Yeah. It really is just like a cartoon character of adorableness. And but I it's short for out. Isabel. It's not an Elizabeth name. I know, but you can do whatever you want. There's people out there like fucking named Dick and their name's Richard. That doesn't make sense to me. Like it yeah. doesn't, there's no logic in nicknames. Just be yourself. Um, yeah. I always wish I had gone with a stage name. Me too. Something I cool. actually, yeah, I genuinely wish I didn't use my real name. Um, but the, that other Liz, the, the, the other Liz M., I was always kind of jealous of her and mm. there's a secret part of me that just wants to see what her life is like. If she's doing great, that's great. Like I also liked her. Like I liked her, but I also was jealous of her. Yeah. Uh, she was the more popular Liz. She was out of all the Liz's. Um, I think in general, she was the most popular, but then she was the most popular Liz. I have to bring this up to Danny and just be like, did, did, did Liz M come off as popular as she seemed in my mind? Like, did I make that up or did, did Danny also understand that she was, kind of my sixth grade nemesis. Like I liked her and I wanted her to like me, but also I wanted to be her, but also I wanted to be better than her. And also, am I currently better than her today? Yeah, I mean, that's actually something interesting. It's like uh, comparing ourselves now, who's cooler? Cause there was this really cool girl in my high school named Rachel. I can't remember her last name. Um, she had a nose ring. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't what was cool about it. She was just cool. And like, she drove like a 67 Mustang or something and it was white. Some people were just cool. And you're just like, yeah. damn, I wish I could be that cool. And I would just like to catch up just to see, like, are you still cooler than me? Is this something that's just within you? Yeah. Uh, and I don't, just- I, I wish nothing on the other Liz. Like, I, I hope she's happy or whatever, but like, I, like, I'm not even mad at her. I just, she, she held such a strong place in my sixth grade, my fifth, sixth grade mind. And she was such, you know, when somebody's like important to like, your lack of self-esteem or your self-esteem. Yeah. Like everybody that built up my self-esteem, I'm pretty much friends with. I would yeah. say except for <laughs> probably around. Like, sure. Yeah, yeah. Cause they were great. There. I was just like, thank you for thank you for my self-esteem. Um yeah. but Rachel like, either was, yeah. didn't yeah. like me or didn't think about me at all. <laughs> so yeah. there was nothing to like stay in contact with. <laughs> exactly. But there's also some people I made because of comedy, I made friends with a bunch of people in high school I never talked to. And they all just seem to be cool people, like nice people. And so also there's that level of like, you can't seem to connect with people. And then post high school, there's this filter is gone. And Mm -hmm. like, you can just, also, I don't give a fuck. You know what I mean? Like you just get to that point in life um, because it was like this, the age and the walls and the construct of high school and what was cool at that time kept you in there and that's gone. Um, but like almost everybody that I would never talk to in high school that I'm now friends with, I was like, oh, they're just lovely people. And I was like scared or I thought they were bigger than what they were or yeah. high school stupid. Um, high school stupid. Just by being in like a grade above you that already makes you cooler. Oh yeah, it's crazy. Like, all you did were born earlier than me. <laughs> like, that's yeah, yeah, that's nuts. You don't know more than me. You just fucking went to class before I did. <laughs> oh, and there's another girl, Melanie, that I was friends with in fifth, sixth grade. She was super sweet. She had little tiny handwriting and I thought it was so cool. And um, when I visited Danny last year, we she keeps everything. So she had our fifth grade and our sixth grade um, class pictures. And I was like, Melanie, I even wrote to her for a bunch because I moved, Danny moved to Tennessee when she went to seventh grade and I moved to a different part of New Jersey. So I also kind of left that school system and me and Melanie wrote letters to each other. And then I guess that eventually fell off after a year, but she was awesome. And I would just, you know, sometimes you want to be like fifth grade, sixth, like fifth grade, fourth, fifth grade me found Danny and we're still really close that I was just like, did I let go of other cool people because I moved away? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, oh, interesting that you moved away so young so that you would have lost touch with a bunch of people. Like I stayed in the same school system for the whole 12 years. Yeah. So and you made an active choice not to talk to these people ever again. I, I, it's not even that I made an active choice not to talk to people. I just have my head up my ass all the time. <laughs> and I just yeah. don't know. Like, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just in my own world. Um, yeah. Uh, speaking of a Melanie who I lost touch with, but although I could probably just find her on Facebook it was the, the Melanie we stayed with the Airbnb in London. Oh yeah. <laughs> she was so, she was so nice. Sweet. So cool. Like, yeah. And, um, I mean, she, she like housed me after I broke up with my fiance, like a uh, super great person. Um, she should probably reach out, <laughs> yeah. you know, just because you're like living her life. Cause wasn't she from like Florida and she moved here or moved to London? Yeah. Like she was somebody that, I'm not but, sure you know she what lives I mean? in London anymore is the thing, but, oh. um, you know, just time just went by and you just kind of lose touch yeah. with people like nothing happened. Uh, but I should reach out. Um, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. There's also my friend, Maria, uh, not Maria, sorry, Mia. We did gymnastics together and she was like a really, she was a couple years younger than me, but we were really close. Um, I would go to sleepovers at her house all the time. I used to call her brother rat face. Um, I had this, like he, her little brother was like my nemesis and he was always trying to play pranks on me, but like, like we call each other rat face. And I, <laughs> I did reach out to her and her parents were so nice. Her parents were so sweet to me and my parents, like they were just good people. And I lost touch with Mer Mia because I stopped doing gym. I quit gymnastics when I was 14 and blah, blah, blah. Again, you just forget these things. And like I said, she was a couple years younger. Um, I think I reached out to her on Facebook like 10 years ago and she kind of was like, no, thank you. And I was, again, I was like, all right, it is what it is. But I really want to just, I loved her brother and I just, he's like a dude now. And I was like, what if like rat face was the man I was supposed to be with? Oh, and we no. had this weird, you know what I mean? Like, I just want to, I Can kind of out to him. I, I don't even remember his real name. Oh, that sucks. <laughs> just rat face. Might... Well, maybe he uses it as a Twitter handle. Have you looked up a rat face? I have to then figure out what Maria's real last name is. I forgot yeah. it. Mia. So Mia's, like I said, and that's the other thing is like Facebook, nobody's on it anymore. But like, I would have to re-remember what Maria, Mia's last name is. Then I would, I think her brother's name was Kevin. But like, there's also, a lot of this is just curiosity, but I remember having this silly, funny, like we were just, we were kids and like, he was younger, but like, we were just like, it was like a funny nemesis thing. And it almost traveled in my family world. Cause I don't know who started calling who rat face, but we did lovingly. <laughs> this is a rom-com in the making. We have to find know, rat right? face. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> get you two married. Oh my God. We just wrote a movie. You need to find rat face. <laughs> <laughs> you have a bunch of cats together. Yeah. Also, I don't know how much younger he was. And I didn't buy just to clarify, I did not have a crush on this child when I was younger. It was just like this funny whatever but then you do get older and you're just like what what is probably what four or five years when you are when right. you're a kid that's like crazy but like when you're an adult you're like yeah. five years although I remember if when I, I was get 14 together I think an 11 year old had a crush on me and I was like oh that's so sweet <laughs> but yeah, now yeah, like yeah. that's nothing yeah absolutely nothing um but I mean we can't get together because isn't that grooming somehow <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> I'm being stupid now, but no. So yeah, I would say in conclusion, rat face, no last name. You were my friend's brother. Reach out to me. I just want to know about you. What if he does? That would be, that would be worth a reunion right. episode. <laughs> like a, be nuts. Okay. Um, all right, guys. Do we need you to write in? You can. Write in, tell you us. Could. Tell us, say bye or, yeah, you know, say, say come goodbye. back or they come back i we'll see what happens i we can't make any promises because right now things are nuts in a good way in a in a yay we're working kind of way um you can always write to us slower on getting back to you than normal um but mostly thank you thanks guys so i think yeah you guys are yeah. awesome thanks for supporting us during us during a dark worrisome time <laughs> Oh fuck, I'm gonna cry. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. This is got it's got emotional. Yeah. All right, let's just go. <laughs> Bye. Guys. Bye.